Okay, so I've got uh, a head roughly in place here. Um, so there's a few ways you can go about this if you like. You can, uh, yeah, you can basically pull the neck out if you want as sort of like a stump. So you can use the move brush for that. So usually I would go the large move brush. And if you want to kind of move in the direction of the, of the polygons that exist, you can hold down Alt while using the move brush. And it'll start to kind of pull out a bit of a, a neck stump that way. Um, it's not the worst thing. It looks like a weird cartoon sperm, but yeah. <laughs> and you can uh, yeah adjust that, sort of start to smooth it and form a base. Um, so that's not a bad way to go. Um, usually the neck is on a bit of an angle here too, so I should probably leave it back a bit. Uh, next up, what I tend to do, brush, insert, insert sphere. And so I can start by uh, putting in, and this is very rough, so I'm going to use my move tool, which is different than the move brush, right? So the move tool is activated by hitting W on the keyboard. And I usually rotate, hold shift, rotate, and snap to a side view. And then I can move this thing down and position it where I think it should be. Then I'll go back to draw mode, which is Q, or you can just click on the actual draw button and I'll use the move brush, right? So now I can kind of nudge this and sculpt this in, into position roughly. So this will kind of form like the upper torso just as a, as a basic kind of uh, blocking. And so this should sort of slope in. Usually the back is up a bit higher, so we'll put that up a bit, right? And very quickly we start to get a sense of this, uh, this bust. So I'm gonna just uh, take a much larger draw size. pull this out. So we do have a bit of a chest area there. Okay, so I can clear that. Control, click and drag again. So I, I have to control, click and drag once to clear the mask that's there. Then I have to control, click and drag a second time because Dynamesh is on, right? So before these are two separate parts. So whenever you do an insert mesh, it kind of masks the original mesh that's there, the original subtool that's there allows you to position, move, and, and make changes to the new inserted mesh. And if it's still masked, you can split the two parts off, which is what I did last week with the eyeballs. In this case, I just wanted to keep this, clear the mask, and then merge the two parts together, right? So they'll uh, merge into one. Then I can start to smooth and start to sculpt. A lot of times with the neck, um, you know, we've got these sort of muscles that come sweeping around from the back of the head or the side of the head. Uh, different muscles and tendons. So we can use uh, maybe clay buildup for that. So this usually comes kind of down from the, the front here. It's going to do a very quick kind of placement. So I usually over exaggerate these to start and then I'll um, sort of adjust them back a bit. And if you have to, you can use the obviously use the move tool to adjust. So a lot of times, you know, things can kind of get bulged in a weird way when we start uh, sculpting in these areas. So you may need to just, in fact, use a, a move brush to kind of fix some of this stuff here. So a little more pronounced Adam's apple. There's usually a little sort of fatty tissue pad under here as well. All right. So very quickly, we can start kind of getting some some decent looking uh, anatomy. So usually the shoulders too. There's a, a kind of a a protuberance uh, or protrusion of some sort uh, around here and just sweep this uh, various muscle here and then collarbone so you can go as low as the collarbone or you can cut it just above the collarbone and shoulder but I want to see these shapes done right so um, what I mean by that is that if we if I just isolate this um, let me just flip that I'll show you the other side so if we're looking at this from below, um, it's going to turn on double sided so you can see this a little better. All right, so look at the profile of this. This is kind of um, an oval shape, roughly, right? It should be circular. I see people that make these weird diamond shapes, or they're very like pointed, and, and they're rounded at the corners a bit. If you leave the stump without good anatomy, I will leave you without a good mark. That's that's the way that's going to go. So I want you guys to actually not just leave it and leave it as an afterthought, but it needs to be needs to be well done. So 
so collarbones, uh, the way I usually, you know, the shorthand that's sort of worked for me for years is bike handlebars, right? Imagine a bicycle. Okay. And then usually there's this area here, triangular, that is actually um, fairly recessed. Again, very kind of quick shorthand, and we can build up the shoulder a bit more here. Now you may have noticed too, some of you, if you're going too far too soon with the, um, let's say with the, the resolution, my resolution's at 400,000. I find at about 400,000, the um, it gets a little harder to use the smoothing brush. Basically, the, it, the smoothing brush is less and less effective at higher and higher resolutions. So a lot of times I find I have to switch, there is a, a more, um, a stronger smoothing brush that's available. But I'll just mention that quickly. Probably turn this back. So to get that brush, you have to enter into Lightbox. The shortcut is the uh, comma key, or you can hit the Lightbox button over here. And we go to Brush as a brush category, and there's basically a hidden extended catalog of brushes in here. And inside of Smooth, there's what's called a Smooth Stronger brush right here. So that will allow you to, and it'll tell you when you hold shift, this will now be the new sort of smooth brush. So anytime you smooth, you see it's a lot more aggressive. It works a lot faster. So when you do get to really, really high resolution, you may have to switch to this brush. Or if you're kind of just figuring out bigger shapes, I often work with a big chunky clay brush. Uh, and then I'll kind of go um, sort of back and forth and, and smooth and, and sculpt back again just to kind of get a better sense of some of these... Uh, these sort of volumes and whatnot, you know? So that can be very, very useful. And I, I've seen some people too, they've got some really odd, awkward shapes in, let's say, the back and side of the skull. If, if you're losing the shape here really, really badly, take a, a smooth, strong brush and then kind of come across it, okay? So this is an okay start. Now, what I'd probably do is uh, slice off or trim off. So we've already seen clip curve, right? Um, I can clip curve this. And for whatever reason, when you first clip curve, it wants to kind of give you a selection. But for a bust, again, I usually kind of clip it or cut it off uh, at the base here. Now, sometimes you will get weird results um, from the clip curve, right? This looks a little better. Sometimes you get these extra lips of mesh left behind. Um, so what you can do is use a... Um, uh, slice curve instead. So if you go to B for brush, S for uh, slice, slice curve. And again, it gives you a warning basically saying when you hold control and shift, this will be the new alternate selection brush. Basically, when you hold shift, it activates a smooth brush. And since I switched to smooth stronger, now when I hold shift, it goes to smooth stronger until I tap on smooth. And it gives me that warning again saying, oh, now when you hold shift, you're going back to the regular smooth. So I'll just say OK to that. So it's the same thing with, uh, by default, Control shift will activate the Select Rectangle, which is very useful because it allows you to hide and unhide parts of the model very quickly. So it's Control shift click and drag, right? And if you Control shift tap off the model, it unhides everything. So yeah, when you switch to Clip Curve, it gives you that warning. Control shift is now the alternate brush. Same thing if I go to Slice Curve. It's sort of affiliated with the selection, uh, selection brushes. So slice may work better. There's either slice or trim. So sometimes I'll use those instead, and that gives you a cleaner cut. In this case, it's um, it's actually just splitting the mesh into two groups, which uh, I don't necessarily want. I actually want to slice off the bottom. So instead of using, uh, sorry, trim, I should say, not slice. So I'm going to go to tr uh, trim curve instead. And again, I'll say OK to that warning. Usually I just turn it off and say, stop bugging me, ZBrush. But this should cleanly cut off. Yeah, it may not work great, uh, unfortunately, in symmetry, but that's OK. I'll just come across with a straight line for now. So this will just slice it, and you see it gives you a new polygroup. And at this point, I may switch to clip curve. So again, just to sort of trim up and clean up this bottom edge. I just don't want to deal with uh, the base of the, of the head here. And like I said, sometimes you still get these little thin, thin areas. And if you DynaMesh this, you'll get potentially a Swiss cheese effect over here. 
So uh, sometimes I just attack that with a bit of smoothing and re dynameshing to clean that up. Uh, and sometimes I'll actually just inflate it so it actually will kind of bulge this area up and over and then I'll touch it up with a bit more sculpting after. So it's a little te technical kind of glitchy thing that happens, but then we can fairly easily clean it up. You know. All right, so that's starting to kind of clear up and go away, which is good. So yeah, once that, uh, that clip curving is gone, um, then we got a nicer kind of base to the to the head, right? So I want to see something that is anatomically structured, for sure, when it comes to setting this up. Now his neck is probably a little thin. I, I probably need to go in and, and just sort of fill in the gaps here. So I may go in with a low intensity, right? Start to kind of flush things out, give him a little bit more fatty tissue, right? Give his neck some mass. Again, I probably will switch back to the uh, smooth stronger just to uh, again I'll skip that note suggestion view so I just want to kind of make this all a lot more subtle and less exaggerated right and give this thing some mass the other way to give things mass too right go in with a move brush and we can pull things uh, a bit wider so holding alt I can pull this stuff a bit wider give it a bit more of a s uh, stronger kind of base more solid looking base right amp up the mass maybe in the back a bit and then I might need to move the shoulders a bit up and wide as well. So like I said, remember, keep that base of the bust oval in shape, right? It should look something like this. Okay. Uh, next up, so I mentioned hair. Uh, a lot of times um, I just wind up sculpting it. I'm not going to get into the hair brushes that are available. Uh, there is this thing called um, fiber mesh. Um, and I'll talk a bit about that later on, but uh, for me, I generally prefer sculpted hair. So I'm going to show you some tricks. Um, last week, I used insert brushes and then split the the unmasked points to make uh, eyeballs. I'll I'll cover making the iris and pupil again, um, but for now, we'll we'll deal with hair, and I'll finish off with the eyeballs. So for eyelashes, let's say you can simply hold control and paint in a mask for the area where you think the eyebrows should be and if you hold control and alt it's again it's subtractive like alt is is very much a subtractive brush in many many cases so if these feel appropriate usually the brows will follow these this sort of uh, curvature of the brow bone so I'm sort of paying attention to that as well so right now again it's just a mask and if we go into the subtool palette on the right side, uh, and if we scroll down, there's what's called extract. So extract is basically going to pull, uh, look at the mask selection and then pull out new mesh on that. It just gives you a preview. What I usually will do is turn off the border thickness. I will turn off double sided as an option and then I'll hit extract and it gives you a preview of what that's roughly going to look like. Okay. So that will essentially be like a separate piece of mesh. So if you ever wonder how they do armor and stuff like that in ZBrush uh, projects, a lot of times they just mask out an area for a shirt or pants, right? And they, then they hit the extract button and then they start, they make that a separate subtool and start sculpting on that. So I'm actually okay with the thickness. I don't need it to be too thick. So if, if I hit extract, it's only a preview. I have to actually hit the accept button, right? So once I hit accept, it's going to now make this a separate tool. So it leaves behind, let me just go to solo so you can see this. So it leaves behind the masking. So I'm going to clear that masking on the head and it leaves behind this sort of brow mesh and I'll clear masking on that. Okay. So now we've got these uh, eyebrows. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the eyebrow subtool. And I'm going to make sure Dynamesh is on for the brows. Um, so I may need the dynamesh to be quite a bit higher. So I'm going to just turn this up to three, four hundred. I'm just looking at the active points. So I might need a poly count of maybe a hundred, two hundred thousand. I'm just guessing. So that's still really low in resolution. So let me increase the slider to a thousand. Now, depending on your scene, if your model's really, really big or really, really small, you might need a really, really high or really, really low resolution slider. So you just have to look at the active points to kind of determine that. 
Now, again, this is not something you should do in symmetry, but just for the sake of, uh, of speed, I'm going to uh, um, work on this uh, in symmetry. So I'm going to use the move tool, and I'm going to actually push these into the head a little bit, just so they sink kind of into the mesh a bit. So I think 100,000 100, roughly is good enough for me for uh, the brows. And they are thicker than what I drew out. And you can always adjust these, right, by moving them. So you can move these. And if you need to push them in or out, hold Alt. And it pulls the vertices in the direction that the, the, the polygon's already facing. So this is a really, really useful way to handle that. And then I often very simply will go with a damn standard brush. Make it small enough, not too high res, not too low res. And then you can start essentially sculpting back and forth, positive and negative, by holding alt down or letting go of alt and then we can start to get a feel for right some actual sort of brows so this is just a very quick kind of sculptural technique that i basically use so holding alt so you're literally just kind of hiding and unhiding bits of this mesh um, via sculpting okay so it's very very simple let's kind of break up the edge too so it's a little more scattered right and then come back with alt so this, I find, is effective enough, right? I don't need anything super uh, detailed at this point or accurate or re realistic or anything of that nature. I just want a placeholder for some of the hair. And the same thing, same Can technique. Detail, though, when you do the final yeah, there'll be a bit more detail in some of the hair in the final project for sure, yeah. So I'm just going back, you know, every five, six, seven strokes, I'm letting the alt uh, sorry, letting the uh, damn sander brush push this in, and then I'll come back and hold Alt to pull out some of the fibers. So it's kind of a way to just mix and match the direction, directionality of some of this stuff. Okay. So for now, that's okay. And if you wanted to, you could smooth it out and, and hit it with another pass if you like. It's it's up to you. So. Okay. So hair. I'm just going to do a really <laughs> quick hair demo. Again, this can be extracted. Um, there are, I believe, I don't know if uh, ZBrush actually includes any hairbrushes in here. Insert. No. Yeah, I've got a few of my own at home. Um, yeah, sometimes there are basically curve brushes that you can download. Uh, I might have a few in my library as well, but I'll, I'll have to dig them out. Um, but yeah, basically people use uh, what are called insert curves. So I'll just show you an example of this. There's insert um, yeah, I think the strap might actually work. Okay, let me try this insert strap. And I'm going to just pick the wide strap. And so what some people will do is actually kind of lay down big chunky strands like this and then start to build up. So this is what's called a, an insert, an IMM curve. What that basically means is it's a curve brush and you see a curve that's live and active. If you grab an endpoint, you can slide it along the surface and pull it, which is great. If you're near the end point or start point, you see a little connecting line, you can continue that stroke, which is also really amazing. And then if you tap anywhere off of that general area where the curve is, it lays it down and you can draw a new curve. And so you can kind of see the power of this for hair, I think, right? So, so some people will, will use this sort of technique for creating hair and there are brushes you can basically download for free or buy for very cheap that are more stylized that have bigger and smaller chunks and strands of hair we'll do more detailed hair for the next emission but this is just to kind of give you guys an idea and brush size by the way determines the the sort of thickness although i find it gets a little out of control especially in symmetry uh, at a certain size one other way to adjust this you can go to stroke there's uh, curve functions sorry, uh, stroke curve modifiers, and there's a size in, uh, adjustment, and you can use this based on this uh, graph. So if I click on this, you see now the size changes. So let me undo and try the stroke again. So it's actually going from thin to thick. So I actually want to go to the stroke and switch that. So I'll grab the, uh, oops, the lower point here and make that a high point delete that and take this point and make it the low point so now if you drag out you can get beautiful luscious hair <laughs> so it's just a matter of like tapping off of the model okay like I said uh, in symmetry things will snap along a center line so <laughs> it's looking pretty gross that's great um, <laughs> 
crazy killer hair for Mr. Hannibal Lecter. That's pretty appropriate. So yeah, you can kind of like draw through and then once you're done, you see the mask is cleared, but I don't want to dyn you do not want to dynamesh this um this hair mesh into the head. I want that separate. So, what I'm going to do <coughs> is say split under subtool and say split to similar parts. So, it should recognize that the head is one mesh and split off the other uh, parts. So, if I go split to similar parts, I'll say OK. On this case, it actually split uh, a bunch of different strands. So, one way to fix that, I can go to merge and just start with the top hair strand and say merge down. I'm just going to say always OK, merge down until the hair's. Uh, except for the brows. I'll keep the brows separate. But all this hair is now its own subtool. I'll show you another way. So um, I'll merge this back down. So let's say we're stuck with this, uh, the hair sort of still stuck to the head. Um, you can actually control shift tap on the head mesh. So it's hiding the hair that's there because it sees it as a separate piece of mesh still. It hasn't been dynameshed together. And be very careful, by the way. Save a version of your tool before you do the hair. Because, like I said, you don't want to actually dynamesh the hair into the head. Um, so, yeah, I've control shift clicked on the, the head, and you can see I can either hide the head or hide the hair mesh, right? Either way you go, you can say split and then go to split hidden. So now the head is separate and isolated. If I click on solo, it's its own subtool, and the hair mesh is its own. And remember, this is in dynamesh, so if I control click and drag, now it's one unified piece, and I can sculpt it, okay? Now, similarly, this is some really <laughs> nasty hair. So terrible. Um, let me just delete that part. I'll show you this uh, other method, the similar method to the uh, to the brows, where we can also just kind of, you know, sculpt out a, a hairline. Oops, let me do that in symmetry. Okay, so we'll just kind of draw it in. And then I'll show you uh, one final sort of sculpting technique that I, I kind of like. It's just a matter of using clay tubes and damp standard. So it's similar in a lot of ways to the brows, just that with a bigger surface area, you can kind of sculpt in a chunkier sort of fashion. Oh, and by the way, if you get lazy with drawing the uh, mask out, you can hold control and switch from freehand to lasso. I might turn off perspective for this so I don't go through the backs of the ears here. We can just basically do something like that, which is fairly useful. Yeah. What is it going to do for all these kind of weird textures to the whole mesh? Uh, in, yeah, where you, yes, but you you have to make it a separate mesh, right? Yeah. So you if you masked squares to make bricks mm -hmm. and then extracted it, this is the exact same idea. It's one of the reasons, actually, yeah, I showed you guys that last semester. So, so yeah, a lot of these ideas actually should feel somewhat familiar to the assignment assignments that we did last year. Okay, so uh, what I'll do now is basically go back to extract. Now just for fun, I always like to do this. Let's turn on perspective again. Uh, so I've turned off double-sided. I've turned off these uh, border, thin border options. Uh, you could put on thin border too if you want, but uh, we'll hit extract. Right. And it kind of already gives you a decent sense of hair. Now I do want some sculpting on this. By the way, you can smooth this out more. You can make it a hell of a lot thicker, <laughs> if you like. So you could start with a like a, a weightier base of hair and then sculpt from that. I'll make that a little less uh, afroish, I guess. Um, so I'll hit extract. Now remember, just hitting extract doesn't actually make the hair. It just previews it. So you have to actually hit ex accept for it to become a separate tool. So yeah, all sorts of stuff is generated this way, like helmets, all kinds of costuming. And then uh, I, I tend to, again, smooth this stuff back a bit to start. Use the move brush. I'll just show you again, uh, just very quickly, some basic techniques. So a lot of times you wanna look for like divisions in the hair. So some people will tend to have like a, a little part over here, right? And you can see very, very quickly how things start to take shape, I hope. Again, it's better not to do this stuff in symmetry, but I won't mind if you if you do some basic sculpting this way. So you can kind of come across here, maybe. Yeah. 
And so, yeah, some people will opt in, again, using uh, DAM standard. Uh, by the way, when you want to quickly switch between tools, you can alt tap on a tool and you can see on the right hand side, it will sort of show or jump to a different sub tool if I just alt tap on the different tools. So a lot of times when I'm working on hair, I may want to solo it or turn on transparency mode so I just can focus on the hair more and know if I switch tools by accident. But uh, yeah, so again, we can go with a, a finer damn standard brush. We can uh, you know, start to kind of draw in the hair here. So again, it's very kind of quick sculptural. Clay tubes is great for this as well. So if you, if you take a look, right, clay tube, clay buildup, we can get these kind of chunky strands. And things tend to move in clumps and in directions when it comes to hair. So one of the really, really useful aspects about using this sort of stuff. And again, each tool can be handled its own way. So I can have a, a Dynamesh for this. Uh, based on my experience with the eyebrows, I may need to up the resolution a bit. So this is actually quite heavy. I'm, I've, I'm at 500,000 polys, but that's okay. So we can keep kind of sculpting and going. Uh, one, one other thing I'll mention, I may have mentioned last week, when you're sculpting and you come across and you see the stroke gets a little bit broken up, especially like this, you see it's really chunky. That doesn't help you when you're making hair. Uh, the one thing I will do is turn on this little button here called Lazy Mouse. And by default, I think it's got this thing called Lazy Smooth and Lazy Radius, and this will be set, set to something like this. So what that basically means is when you're dragging out a curve, you see it leaves behind a little red line. That's actually there to average out your stroke so you get a smoother, more fluid brush stroke and can allow you to draw almost like perfect semicircles and circles to a certain degree. So the higher lazy smooth and lazy radius are, uh, the longer that line becomes and the greater the lag in your stroke. Now that's fine for if you're doing like detailed decorative work and architecture and stuff like that or maybe uh, armor, whatever it might be. But for just general brushing, especially when something's more organic like this, I tend to turn this down to zero and one, the lowest setting for radius and smooth. And lazy step, I tend to set to point two, and I'll show you why. Basically, it just prevents your stroke from being completely broken. Um, now, I may actually up that to like 0.05 or something just to play around with that, but you see I get a very nice fluid stroke. Now, the reason I switched from 0.02, by the way, to 0.05, 0.02 and the lower you go in lazy steps, so 0.01 for example, the same stroke, because it's overlapping so much, it actually makes the stroke more uh, aggressive and thicker. So that's why sometimes it's a little bit of a balancing act. If you want to keep the same consistency without adjusting the intensity of the brush, you, you may want to adjust lazy step. For me, the range is like 0.02 to 0.05, and I think 0.05 works great in a ton of uh, situations. So as you can see, right, as you start sculpting, you get a better sense of hair. Uh, again, I may up the intensity here. So again, I tend to go in kind of chunky overlapping strands, right? You can um, kind of work from a seam. So a lot of times that's a good method to, to go with. And you can go, again, same thing with the damp standard or the clay brush, holding alt down to dig in and then uh, just pulling up. And then we can use da uh, damn center to kind of go over that again one more time. So holding alt or just um, letting it dig in, right? And at a certain point, uh, what you can do as well, um, I have this handy clay polish button over here. So what I often like to do, just to get a little bit of a stylized look, because it's, it's stylized hair sculpting and done really, really rough and quickly. Turn up the softness to 20 or 30. Turn up the sharpness to 15 or 20. Hit clay polish. And it gives you this really kind of interesting... Uh, stylized look, right? Again, this is a quick demo as well, so there's not a ton of polish going on up here, but it can be useful, and then you can smooth it out and see what sort of look that gives you, right? Maybe I'll try clay polish again. So, you know, for the first submission, um, you know, just going through and sculpting the whole headpiece, hairpiece, the, um, you know, the brows, that's totally fine. For ponytails, so if anybody wants, uh, has a ponytail or whatever, or hair that, that's longer too, you can simply go to brush. Uh, if you wanted to, you can insert a sphere, or you can do, um, there's another set of brushes, which are clay tubes. So we can do clay tubes, <laughs> right? And then we can move our endpoint. And remember, if you go to stroke, 
turn on the size modifier and we can actually you know make it go from thick to thin if, if I just tap and grab that again I believe tap on it should affect it maybe I'll undo and try the stroke again which stroke where's the size for some reason it's not scaling but yeah modifiers Reset this thing and try it again. Okay. Yeah, weird. For some reason, it's not scaling, but in a worst case scenario, all right, we can just tap off of that, uh, take a huge brush, and then do a little bit of smoothing at uh, one of the ends here. Control click and drag. And then if we control click and drag again, because I'm in Dynamesh, it just merges it together beautifully. What a lovely hairstyle. <laughs> right, and then we can sculpt from that, right? So now I, I just have to kind of smooth it out a bit. Maybe, you know, you can also inflate it as well. I also use damn standard, or sorry, not damn standard, um, snake hook as well. So if you, if, you, if you want a lot of strands, sometimes you can just kind of grab this as well and kind of create uh, streaks and strands that way. Um, not as crazy about that method, but it, it can work depending on the scenario. And yeah, using inflate as well. So if you need to kind of bulge out one area. Okay. Lovely. It's like a, like a junky Jedi or something. Um, <laughs> all right. 